61 innocent lives, most of them children, killed at an elementary school in Texas. She wanted to go to law school. <laughs> she played softball. She played basketball. All I can hope is that she's just not a number. Hopefully something gets resolved. Families and our nation still in shock. Evil swept across Uvalde yesterday. And some lawmakers are now hoping to turn this pain into action. It is insane that we allow an 18-year-old to go in and buy an AR-15. What the hell did we think he was going to do with that? Jayla Nicole Silguero, Jace Carmelo Luevanos, Annabel Rodriguez, Jacqueline Jalen Casares, Eliano Cruz Torres, Rogelio Torres, Amory Joe Garza, Javier Lopez, Eva Mireles, Irma Garcia. These are 10 of the names and faces we currently know who were senselessly gunned down at Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. Now these 11 empty boxes here represent the other 11 victims who have not yet been publicly identified. All 21 victims were killed in the same classroom yesterday afternoon and 17 others were injured. Good evening, I'm glad you're with us tonight on Denver 7 News at 5. I'm Shannon Ogden. I'm Ann Trujillo. One day later, and it is still so tough to comprehend that yet another elementary school, little kids, were the target of a mass shooting. And tonight we are getting a look at how it unfolded. Reporter Morgan Norwood begins our coverage. Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, now the epicenter of grief and heartbreak after authorities say the alleged gunman, an 18-year-old armed with an AR-15 style weapon, stormed inside of a classroom, barricaded himself inside, and opened fire on students and teachers. I just don't understand how people could sell that type of a gun to a kid, to an 18-year-old. Like, what is he going to use it for? But for that purpose. Authorities say Salvador Ramos had just turned 18 on May 16th. Days later, he bought two AR-15 style rifles. His grandfather telling ABC's Matt Gutman he had no idea the weapons had been purchased and didn't know what Ramos had planned. I didn't know he had weapons or nothing or, or this or that there. If I would have known, I would have reported it. What President Biden described as carnage in that school, police say began with a gunman allegedly shooting his own grandmother in the forehead. She did survive, but authorities say he stole her truck from the home, crashed it outside of Robb Elementary, and emerged from his car, wearing tactical gear, including a vest that could hold ammunition. He was not wearing the body armor that multiple law enforcement officers previously told ABC News he had. When he sees the students and our teacher, that's when he starts shooting at the window. In the days leading up to the attack, authorities say the gunman reportedly sent pictures and videos of guns to users on various social media platforms. Several users also telling ABC News the suspect had been abusing animals and showing pictures of that abuse to others on social media. This afternoon, Governor Greg Abbott elaborating on the case, saying the suspect had no known mental health issues. Abbott adding that the suspect made no mention that he was going to do anything until about 30 minutes before the attacks. Posted by the government on Facebook approximately 30 minutes before reaching the school. He said, I'm going to shoot my grandmother. The second post was, I shot my grandmother. And despite multiple mass shootings over the past two and a half decades, little has been done in Congress on gun regulations. And today during a press conference with Texas Governor Greg Abbott, gubernatorial candidate Beto O'Rourke approached the stage and interrupted him. Sit down. You're out of, you're out of line and an embarrassment. Hey, sit down and don't play this The next shooting is right now and you are doing nothing. He's scheduled to speak at the NRA convention this Friday in Houston, Texas, just days after these kids were slaughtered right here in Uvalde. He says this was unpredictable. It was totally predictable. And tonight, Governor Abbott would not say if he was going to cancel his visit to the NRA convention in Texas, only saying he is living moment to moment. 72% of American gun owners support background checks for private gun sales. This is according to the most recent Pew Research Center poll of more than 4,000 Americans on gun policies. 87% of gun owners said they support preventing people with mental illnesses from buying guns. And just 37% of gun owners want to ban assault-style weapons. Compare that to 74% of non-gun owners. And if you are looking for support during this time, there are resources available. You can call Colorado Crisis Services. The number there is 1-844-493-8255. The phone lines are always open 
and your call is confidential, you can also text the word TALK to 38255. Well, if you're looking to help the victims of the Uvalde shootings and their families, we have resources and links on how you can do that right now on the DenverChannel.com. You can also get all of our in-depth coverage on this story on the free Denver 7 Plus app. It is available to download on your streaming device. Well, today, President Biden signed an executive order on policing. It marks two years since George Floyd was murdered by police in Minneapolis. This order requires federal law enforcement agencies to review and revise policies on use of force. It will also restrict the flow of surplus military equipment to local police. And it encourages limitations on chokeholds and no-knock warrants by attaching strings to federal funding. Today, Governor Polis signed the Fentanyl Accountability and Prevention Act into law. State statistics show more than 900 Coloradans died of a fentanyl overdose last year. This new bill makes possessing more than one gram of fentanyl a felony, and that is regardless of whether it's pure or laced into another drug. The bill also raises the penalties for fentanyl dealers. With Memorial Day weekend right around the corner, community pools across Den the Denver Metro are getting ready to open. But a lifeguard shortage is forcing multiple cities to limit pool hours. So we sent Denver 7's Ivan Rodriguez to a few of the pools to see what cities are doing to keep at least some of them open. For many community pools across the Front Range, opening day approaches. I'm ready, I'm just nervous. Meaning employees like this one in Aurora are busy applying the final touches. I feel like the whole city has high expectations for us. But with those high expectations comes a reality out of their hands, a lifeguard staffing shortage. Fully staffed, we're at about 300 lifeguards um, for our 10 facilities, and we're at about 200 right now, uh, right around there. Alec Raymond with the city of Aurora says the shortage is making them think outside the box, using the employees they do have to open all six outdoor pools on Saturday but on a limited schedule throughout the week. We've had to repurpose some of our staff and have them go between pools to make sure we can um, get coverage out there. In Boulder, they're meeting the lifeguard shortage with a different approach. Again, remember the three steps, turn the machine on, place the pads correctly, follow directions. Instead of camp counselors only being responsible for interacting with their groups of children throughout the day, they'll now also be trained as lifeguards freeing up other lifeguards for other locations. It frees up, you know, maybe one or two, but that's huge in the schedule because that means that maybe we can shift them over to a different area. Maybe we can open a different area instead for those hours. And that's huge for our community. The city of Denver says its solution is focused on equity by prioritizing pools in underserved communities over those in affluent areas. We made some decisions about the five indoor pools that would shut down based off of equity, looking at the various different neighborhoods, close proximity of other resources, whether it's in DPR with other recreation centers or outdoor pools in close proximity. Every city doing its part to keep as many pools open for communities to enjoy. Ivan Rodriguez, Denver 7. It's about our focus, our preparation, and then just going out and executing. It's time for the Avs to shine at home. The team gets ready for tonight's Game 5 as the Blues head coach addresses the elephant in the room. I was aware of a threat made to NASM, not the racist stuff, and no way is it acceptable. There's no room for it anywhere. And despite high gas prices, plenty of Coloradans are getting ready to hit the road for Memorial Day weekend. 60s and 70s today, even warmer weather for the holiday weekend.